those who came today, so thank you all for coming. We're here in Petaluma. What is our address here today? 90 Jesse Lane. Okay. Started. So thank you again for coming. I'm going to go over the rules, and uh, we won't get started until I'm confident that I'm trying to get to where I can see everybody, hopefully, kind of. So when I'm done, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. So uh, today there is a confidential reserve today. So what that means is that we do have a contractual obligation with the seller to reach a certain price point. We fail to reach that price point. Seller is not obligated to sell. They could choose to sell if they want, if it's close enough, but they're not obligated to sell unless we reach that price point. Now that number is going to remain confidential with one possible exception, and that would be that the winning bidder, we will disclose that to you if you are short of the number. If you have exceeded the number, we will not tell you, and you may not want to know. We'll just tell you. You've exceeded the number. It's a sale. Okay, but if, again, if you're short, we will tell you the number, and we'll show you the contract, and you can decide if you want to make it, uh, to bring it up to a guaranteed sale. This? Now, um, the winning bidder is going to need to bring 3% right into deposit within 24 hours of your offer being accepted, okay? So within 24 hours, you need to bring 3% into uh, the title company of your choosing. A couple of things that we do that are quite different uh, than any other auction company you may have ever uh, uh, seen or any auction you've ever attended. Uh, number one is that we're going to offer everyone here at any time during the proceedings the opportunity for a five-minute recess, as long as it is an auction-related recess. In other words, if you have reached your limit, the number that you promised your husband or your wife you would not exceed, you would be very foolhardy getting past that number without talking to your husband or your wife. No house is worth that kind of <laughs> squirm fest at dinner tonight. <laughs> so if I see that you're bidding, and then I see that you you have stopped bidding, I know there's only one reason that you would stop bidding. That's because you probably reached the number. And I may invite you. If you don't ask me, I may remi I might remind you at that point. Would you like to take five minutes and make a phone call? So that being said, we typically have two or three or four or five or six recesses. So whereas a traditional auction could be it's 90 on. seconds, this could be 30 minutes, depending on how many recesses we have. So just ask you to all be patient with one another. This is a very big decision. And if you need five minutes to think about it, I don't, we need to all be respectful and give everybody that time to make that phone call. If you have any respect, for the institution of marriage, <laughs> you will do that and allow people that time. So, uh, let's see. The final bid is the purchase price, so let's talk about that. There is a buyer's premium, okay, and uh, in this case it is uh, 70%. Uh, however, at, a tr at any other auction you've ever been to, that's added on at the end, okay? So just keep the numbers round. If the final bid was $100,000, then the purchase price would be one hundred seven. okay? And what we've discovered is that people hate that, to have a big fee whacked on at the end. So we're not going to do that. Whatever your bid is today, that's the purchase price, okay? So let's just kind of do a quick test run here. We know there's a 7% buyer premium. If the final bid was five hundred thousand dollars, what would the purchase price be? Five hundred thousand. Hey, for everyone in the room, excellent. Not five thirty-five. It's going to be whatever you raise your hand, whatever that number is. That's the purchase price. Okay, so there's going to be uh, a seventy-two hour mutual right to rescission for both buyer and seller. That means. 
if you are not satisfied for any reason, don't even feel you need to give us a reason. If you have changed your mind and you want to cancel and get your deposit money back in that first 72 hours, you're free to do so. Okay, and that 72 hours will start when you receive written confirmation, when you get your offer ratified. The moment you get that contract ratified, you'll have both buyer and seller will have three days to cancel for any reason. Now, we do have an elderly termite report, which technically is out of date. I believe it was for 14000 and change. Uh, after the 72 hours, so after the 72 hours, if both buyer and seller decide they want to proceed, the buyer will then have an additional seven days to get any and all inspections that you might like. During that seven day period, if there's anything you discover that is not to your liking, again, you can cancel and get all your deposit money back. Okay? Now, having said that, these are the sign up sheets. So, everyone that's participating has put their name here. I'm going to ask that before you leave, and James will get out to the door and try to corner you and make sure you do this. If you leave here in second or third or fourth or fifth place, you should write your high number here. Because a week from now, we may get a cancellation. And we're going to call right down that list. And we're going to start with the next and that's highest bidder. Okay, so you could leave in third place today and end up a winner next week. So don't forget to put your name, or your name is here, put your number next to your name so we know to call you. Okay, uh, another good point. There's uh, a real business opportunity here. Uh, any agents or brokers that are interested in the prospect of being involved in the auction business, we partner. In fact, I would say in the last two years, 60% of our business has come to us from other agents and brokers that aren't even working with our company. So there's a real business opportunity here, and there's some sign-up sheets that look like this. So anyone that wants to fill one of these out and turn them in, you'll be contacted later to hear about that opportunity. Okay, auction designated lenders. So we have uh, Craig here today, somewhere. There's Craig from Partners Mortgage uh, Group. And he's one of our auction designated lenders, as is Bank of America. Both of their numbers are on the auction rule, I believe, on page two. Now, what is that all about? Let me explain that. We do not have a financing uh, contingency per se with these auctions. And what that means is, uh, you're expected to close this transaction. Um, if you're, and you're free to finance, you can do cash, you can do financing, but we do not consider a failure to finance an acceptable reason to not close with this one proviso. If you get a pre-approval to us in that first 10 days from either uh, Craig from Partners or from Bank of America, provide that to us, and if I then get a call from you saying, I'm pre-approved with partners, and now he's calling me and saying, we can't close the deal. You will be entitled to all your deposit money back, okay? Uh, we've not had one of our auction designated lenders approve somebody and then not be able to close. But it's a dynamic market. It could happen. If it does happen, at least we know this is not a story being concocted by somebody that's just trying to get out of this deal. Uh, we know if one of our auction designated lenders tells us, I can do this deal, and then they call me back and say, I can't do this deal, well, it's certainly not the buyer's fault. And so you will get all your deposit money back. So you can use any lender you want, but we are recommending that you at least run a parallel track. Get a pre-approval with them. If your lender then cannot perform, you've got a backup. And you may find all of our lenders are trying to get your business. So they're going to provide you with a very competitive quote that will hopefully make you want to use them as your go-to lender anyway. Okay. Uh, is there any special rules today or no? No? Okay, so uh, I think I've covered all the highlights, so I'm going to ask if there's any questions. Can you just give a little background about the property, whatever you know? I'll give a little, and then James may give a little more. What I know is that at one point, it was used as a care facility for the elderly. And I guess they were generating up to $288,000 a year. 
uh, in income, and it's my understanding that uh, it would be certainly possible for you to continue along those lines. 